Well, the man who's coming to see us now, like Melvin there, is preparing to head to Ukraine himself next month. Gary Fear from Nosal will be going to the country for a seventh time to hand out humanitarian aid. We'll chat with him in just a second. First, though, BBC Radio Stokes' Vicky Norton has been looking at his incredible story. <laughs> I'm an estate agent. I've always done a bit for charity, I think, but this time I uh, decided to go a bit further. That's Gary Fear from Nozel speaking to us last September from Warsaw, Poland, as he prepared to cross the border to hand out humanitarian aid in Ukraine. We basically go to a huge catch and carry every time, every day, sometimes twice a day, line all the food up in, um, in its respective sort of categories in the car park and just fill bags put them in the van and go and give them out to people in some really, really bad places. That was during one of six trips he's made to the country, in which he's travelled around 22,260 miles and delivered over 15 tonnes of food to those in need of it. Fast forward 15 months and he's planning to do it all over again. Here's why. If you gave me £5,000 a week, and I could come out every week, I'd come out and spend it, and it still wouldn't be enough. But it, it's it's doing something. It's better to do something than sit and do nothing. Gary plans to make his seventh trip to Ukraine in late January. So that's just a little bit from BBC Radio Stokes' Vicky Norton about what Gary's been up to. I'm delighted to say he's coming to see us. Gary, good morning. Morning, Lee. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. How was the trip in from Nosal? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, and thanks for having me in. Good. No problem. Our pleasure. Thank you for coming in to see us. Um, six trips so far to Ukraine, a seventh at the end of next month. Why? What was it that got you involved in the first place? Uh, we went to Chernobyl as a uh, sorry to Ukraine to visit Chernobyl as part of a charity trip back in 2018. Um, a completely daft trip, but for our, our local first responders, uh, fell in love with the country, thought the people were wonderful, stayed in touch with a few, and when this all happened, uh, couldn't wait to try and do something. What's it been like for you to experience what you've experienced in these in these six trips? Eye-opening, I imagine, will be an understatement. Oh, definitely, yes, yeah. Um, heartwarming and heartbreaking, I think, in equal measure. Um, we've seen some absolutely terrible sights um, and some very upsetting ones. We've seen people who've lost all their pets, lost their family, uh, lost their homes. Um, but equally, we've got a lot of pleasure from seeing what... Um, what people or how people's reactions are when we just turn up jump out of a van and start handing out food um it's been lovely really lovely to do um and i'll carry on doing it for as long as i can that's it so i mean i, I sounded surprised before we came to you and i said he's planning a seventh trip we just heard a clip of you there in that little piece from Vicky. You would happily make this 70 trips, would you? Oh heavens, yes, yeah. If if I um, if someone gave me the money and I and I could give up and I could give up work, um, I, I would be out there every week um, taking taking food. Uh, I, I would just get so much satisfaction from it because you're doing some good. What happens when you arrive there? Do you take it to an, an arranged location or do you just watch the process? Um, we uh, we now uh, get to a border crossing and walk over because it's better than queuing for eight or nine hours in a car. A uh, gentleman, a great friend, picks us up, drives us to Kiev, and then literally every day in the morning, uh, cash and carry, fill the van with food and then just go out to a different location each day uh, and just hand the food out, normally to sort of fairly remote villages. You just mentioned it there when, when you actually do the deliveries eventually after all that travelling to get there when you do the deliveries and you do see the the gratitude etched across people's faces just just try and describe the feeling for us if you can for, from your point of view who's on the other end of it um, I think when they see us many of them are just in tears that someone's taken the trouble to come and see them it's remarkable. I think if you got out of the van and just gave them a hug and didn't have anything else, they'd, they'd just be happy that someone hasn't forgotten them. But when you hand them out food and something that'll keep them going for a while, um, oh, yeah, you can you can see many of the older ladies, the babushkas, as they call them, um, they're, they're, they're in tears that someone's taken the trouble. It's an addictive feeling, oh, I, I imagine, yeah. because oh. you can see the difference yeah. that it's making. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. When we talk about the difference that it is making, so six trips so far mm -hmm. with a seventh and hopefully many more yep. to come. From trip one to now, how much have you been able to see 
the difference in the country out there. Um, we've seen uh, some places which haven't changed from the first time we went to them. They're still uh, in, in a terrible state with people's homes, just, just rubble. Uh, in other places, we've seen sort of a, a glimmer of hope where people have started to rebuild their homes or they've maybe had a porter cabin dropped off in their garden for them to live in whilst the home is rebuilt. It's very slow, um, but yeah, there's some progress for some people getting back to normal, but most of them, there's one village we've been to, they haven't had electricity since February 2022 when it all started. And does that kind of tie into what I can see in front of me here, the fact that you're not just delivering food, you're hoping to supply a village with a generator? We're hoping to take a generator to a village. We did last uh, February. Um, when it was bitterly cold, uh, they took a generator which allowed them to at least charge their phones uh, and we're hoping to do the same again for another village this time. When you come back, when you've made these trips, what's it like when you're making that journey back? When, when you've seen everything that you've seen mm -hmm. and you've seen the struggles that people are going through and they're so, so grateful just to receive some food that's yep. been delivered... What's it like in your mind as you as you make that long, long trip home? Uh, I think it's more frustration than anything that we didn't um, have more money to spend in the time, that we couldn't spend more time there. Um, and all I think probably is when can I plan the next trip and when can I get back and start fundraising? Because the fundraising is the hardest bit. So that's the key thing. The key mm. emotion when you come away is frustration that you can't do more. Yes, yeah, definitely. Tell me about Jordan, someone you're keeping in mind, a former former son. Um, Jordan Gatley was a, um, a young lad who, um, really brave guy, he, he left the British Army um, in March 2022 and told his parents he was going off to fight for Ukraine. Um, very skilled, well trained uh, and he wanted to put his skills to use. Uh, he crossed over uh, with a friend and joined the International Legion but sadly died there in June of 2022. Um, I only knew about him after I'd seen a note from his dad on the Nantwich community page to say everyone's welcome to the funeral and so on. Messaged his dad, said, you know, there is a connection just, just because of Ukraine. Would you mind if I came? Got to know his mum and dad and realised what a, a, a wonderful guy he was. Um, and uh, shortly after that, returned to Ukraine, um, brought back a medal that he'd been presented with because his parents obviously couldn't go as easily. Um, and met uh, met his best friend and every trip now that we do uh, his, 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 his face is all over our van and everything is in um, is in memory and honour of, of him you know very very special guy by the sound of it and, and you know what when we were just talking about things to motivate you the, the smiles on faces when mm. you get there when you're making that long trip you've done 20 plus thousand miles mm. if ever there is a tough point and I imagine there is with fatigue and tiredness setting in maybe sometimes on a daily basis that's just someone who you've got tattooed on your van who can motivate you every second of every oh, trip. definitely yeah yeah I mean to do it in memory of someone who was obviously so brave and so special and to have the the, um, the support of his family um, lovely lovely people it, it really has been a pleasure yeah thank you for coming in to see us um, just tell us about the next trip. It's at the end of January. Just just tell us the route that you take because it, okay. it's not like you're popping down to, to, to <laughs> Asda down the road, is it? No, it's uh, um, 24th of January. It's a uh, fly to Poland because there's no flights into Ukraine. Okay. Uh, from this time, we're going to, uh, to Krakow. From Krakow, it's a train to the border at a place called um, Shemeshil. Uh, and then from Shemeshil, uh, taxi to Medica and walk over the border and get picked up by a friend called Igor. And Igor will then take us to Kiev which is about eight or nine hours uh, and then we'll start the next day doing what we normally do and carry on until the money's run out that's fantastic how long do you normally stay um this time it's a week <clears throat> the longest we've done i think is nine days and um it just goes by in a flash brilliant great work honestly it's been a pleasure to meet you gary and thank you, you so thanks much. for having me on thank not you. a problem not a problem and now it's back to the day job yeah oh yes being an estate agent yeah estate agent but john b in that which and i'll be back there in about half an hour top man thank if you he's, if he's late for work he is completely <laughs> forgiven because of everything he's just said so if the boss is on or, or any colleagues cut him a bit of slack because he's been in to see us this morning and it's been great to see him as well that is gary fear from nosal who is preparing for his seventh trip to Ukraine on the 24th of next month, delivering aid, delivering food to people in need there following the Russian invasion. You just heard Gary describe the difference he's seen in the country over the six trips that he's made so far, preparing for a seventh and says he'd happily make that 70. What a nice guy. Really good to have him in with us this morning. <laughs>